The markets just had one of their most volatile weeks in years following the unwinding of what is known as the yen carry trade. We're going to spend a very short amount of time talking about this and reflect upon what happened over the past week because there are a lot of places you can go on YouTube to learn more about this from people who are more educated on the subject than myself. But when it comes to what we know and uh, what we do our best to be educated on, that is TA, that's technical analysis. So we're going to spend the far majority of this video on the charts talking um, the short, medium, and long-term future of some of the names that are most near and dear to Waves Capital, Bitcoin, Bitcoin miners, AI plays, Palantir, Veritone. We're going to discuss uh, the IWM, the Russell 2000, Apple. We're going to take a look at NVIDIA because NVIDIA's earnings are coming up. That's a massive macro catalyst. And uh, speaking of macro catalyst, we also have the Fed meeting next month. Uh, I want to discuss that at some point, probably when we get into the Russell 2000 um, and Bitcoin, even because that's also a major catalyst that I do believe will be priced in come early September. So just keep that in mind. And um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much the entire rundown of the video. So I was excited to make this. This is going to be a little more laid back of a video. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it. As always, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you're excited about in the markets, what you're seeing opportunity in, <clears throat> excuse me, because we had so much volatility this week that uh, I mean if there's anything you were eyeballing for a while then uh, you had the opportunity to pick it up or if you wanted to short anything <laughs> Apple uh, then there was definitely opportunities to buy some put options uh, upon bounces so uh, let me know in the comments below what you're thinking about the markets what you're excited about give the video a like if you gain value from it and as always if you guys want to know exactly how I'm trading all of the names that we're going to be discussing today then that is the first link in the description of this video. It's my complete portfolio and daily trade alerts and email newsletters. Just a heads up, I do primarily trade options contracts. I do have a long-term holding portfolio in here that I very rarely ever touch. But when it comes to day-to-day -day operations and day-to-day -day action, I do trade options. So if you guys aren't familiar with options trading, then I do have a simple yet effective guide to trading options. I did my best to make this as simple and in-depth as possible. So go check that out if you don't know how to trade options and you want to try to dip your toe in the options waters. But my complete portfolio and daily newsletters, daily trade alerts, daily email newsletters, these are two examples of those bad boys uh, just that I sent out yesterday just for the example of this video. Send out a few of these every single trading day. Talk about my trades. Talk about real-time price targets and price action in some of our favorite names, many of which we are discussing today. And um, yeah, you get all that for 15 bucks a month. So if you do want to join, it means a lot. Welcome to the winning team in advance if you do. But if not, no worries at all. I appreciate you watching this video right here, right now. Let's get into it. So Again, real quickly, the market just had the most volatile week since the pandemic outbreak. This is what we learned. Uh, I couldn't highlight on this because of all the links, I think. But a wild week of trading. We're just going to read the first two paragraphs. A wild week of trading on Wall Street ended with the S&P 500 back roughly where it started. But the lessons learned by whipsawed investors over those five days could determine what happens next. The S&P 500 had its worst day since 2022 on Monday and had its best day since 2022 on Thursday. The 10-year Treasury yield dropped below 3.7% on Monday before finishing around the 4% level and Wall Street's fear gauge of the CBOE volatility index actually finished the week lower despite spiking to 65 on Monday, the highest since 2020. So exciting times, you guys. Again, Monday was known as a uh, I was calling it the modern Black Monday. A lot of people are calling it the new Black Monday, tomato, tomato. But the fact that we're comparing that to Black Monday, which happened in 1987, is absolutely insane. And uh, but honestly, it's kind of cool that we all got to live through it. So let me know what you guys were thinking on Monday, because that was an amazing day for all of our put options. Thank God we had put options. <clears throat> OK, so as I said in the beginning, this was due to the unwinding of what no what uh, the hedge fund trade unwind that jolted Wall Street this week may continue to agitate markets. The recent unwinding of the yen carry trade could remain a long term headwind amid already turbulent markets. The popular, uh, we're just going to read this one once again, the popular trading strategy amongst hedge funds in which an investor borrows in a certain currency with low interest rates to buy higher yielding assets elsewhere began to fall apart last week when the Bank of Japan unexpectedly raised its benchmark interest rate and followed up with currency intervention. Okay, so again, we're not going to get into the specifics and the minutia of what happened and, and the kind of crazy domino butterfly effect that uh, occurred after the Bank of Japan did this, but again, the, the first segment on the new All In podcast um, 
talked about them many times before. I'm sure many of you guys are familiar. Uh, the news, the the new episode just uploaded yesterday at the time of recording. If we're watching later, then it's still irrelevant. Um, but they discuss the yen carry trade and go into far more detail. And uh, if you guys do want to learn more about that or if you're interested in that uh, and their, their just opinion on all of this, then that is this video. So go check that out if you want to learn more about that. Once again, staying in our lane. We're trading. We're going to take a look at Bitcoin. We're going to take a look at Bright, Mara, and then whatever else names I discussed in the title of this video. Okay, so it's kicking it off with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is looking incredibly, incredibly promising. <laughs> on, the, on the note of the Japanese, on, on the note of the yen. I'm half Japanese, so I can do that stuff. Um, Bitcoin is looking good in the short term. We're looking at four hour candles at first and then. Uh, probably with the rest of these, I'll just I'll just stick to daily candles, keep it a little more uh, zoomed out, a little more macro. But once again, we will be discussing the short, medium, and long term for all of the names that we're looking at today. Okay, getting it off with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is looking very promising. I said in the newsletter for the past few days that I wouldn't get excited about Bitcoin unless we were able to break back above uh, the significant historical ceiling and floor, as well as psychological even of $60,000. We broke above this line of resistance, this yellow line right here. Um, that was very, very promising to see. And since then, we have managed to break well above um, that get excited target, that get excited level of $60,000. It actually made it all the way up to $63,000 on some pretty strong volume. And what I really like to see now is that Bitcoin is holding, as you can see, guys, we're crawling right above. We're crawling right pretty much directly upon that $60,000 level which just kind of speaks speaks further to uh, to the validity of this historical even, uh, this psychological even, I should say, and historical uh, point of resistance and support. But from here, and you could say we're almost printing a little bull flag, which is a, a sharp move up followed by a descending triangle pattern or symmetrical triangle pattern. Uh, looks pretty bull flaggy to me. Um, I see one of two scenarios playing out as far as the short term is concerned, talking the week ahead, talking into, you know, the final weeks of August and, uh, likely it'll probably happen within the next, I would say week, probably three to five days. If I'm being honest, due to the hyper volatile nature of the markets and probably the volatility that we'll see in the weekend. So one of two things is going to happen. Bad news first, bad is that we end up coming down to retest this line of broken resistance as new supports. TA 101, you guys know the drill. Broken resistance becomes new support. Broken support becomes new resistance. That's TA, especially if there is a significant trend line in place. This trend line isn't super significant. I would call this medium term, but uh, I definitely think that it is possible that we fall seven to eight percent over uh, in the days ahead. I'll just keep it kind of vague there. Um, in order to test this trend line, once again, broken resistance as new support. That would result in a seven to eight percent descent back down to you know like the 55, 56k level in the week ahead. If we break out, if this bull flag is legit, uh, and again, a lot of things are pointing to to this being the case due to a breakout, uh, a hold above 60K, and just positive momentum with this rate cut ahead that's on 17th and 18th, where notori or where it is pretty much unanimous amongst traders that there will be a rate cut, uh, the, the magnitude of that rate cut, whether it's 25 basis points or 50 basis points, if they do 75, the market's going to the moon. Uh, even if it's 50, the markets are going to rip. 25, 25 basis points, we're probably just going to go with technicals and general economic momentum if that's the case. So I will say ultimately, this is going to be, it's more likely than not that this will result, uh, this FOMC meeting, the, the Fed decision for rate cuts in late, uh, mid to late September uh, is going to be a net positive uh, event for the markets. And once again, as I implied at the beginning of this video, I do think that that is likely priced in you know, come the first to definitely by the second week of September, more likely the first week of September, people are just going to get excited about the potential, especially, uh, I would not be surprised if, uh, the fed does cut by 50 basis points. Um, and that's actually not being priced in into the, into the odds markets or futures markets for this rate cut event, um, because there's a gambling market for everything. So, um, that's not being priced in. I think it's very, very possible, maybe even likely that that does happen, that 50 basis point rate cut. And that would be uh, again, just very, very good news for the markets. The markets go whoop, parabolic. Okay. So uh, again, if we do climb, I think we climb seven to 8% there as well in order to test this cyan line that I have right here, which is just uh, a long-term uh, a long -term trend line that has been in play. And ultimately I do think it's possible. Let's go to daily candles and we'll just stick to daily candles from here. Get rid of that big B. Um, ultimately, I do think 
that uh, it is also possible over in the months ahead, okay, as far as the medium term is concerned, we'll stick to medium term for Bitcoin. I have, when we're looking at Bitcoin miners, I'm, I'm going out to November. I think that I will say by September 1st, um, Bitcoin will ultimately, even if we see short-term downside, I think that by, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll say I won't do September 1st. This is a very conservative trend line. Keep that in mind because I'm using multiple touch points, multiple candle wicks, uh, multiple solid candles for this trend line. Let's just go to mid-September, kind of near the rate cut. So September 15th, I do think that even if, again, we do fall 7 to 8% in the short term, we probably plateau, go sideways for a little bit, and then ultimately rally up to $65,000, $66,000 by mid-September in order to test this line of long-term resistance, okay? And again, that's conservative resistance if you wanted to do. I mean, I would ne I definitely wouldn't go beyond this, but uh, I would call that absolute resistance on uh, this longer-term descending uh channel triangle ish patterns weird but this is a line of resistance um that'd be a, like from current levels at 60k that'd be 13 percent or around 68 69 thousand dollars and then when we when if we can break above this in the months ahead that would be when i get really excited and pretty convinced in the idea that we climb to you know 85 90 000, and maybe even uh, six figures okay so that's bitcoin uh again in the short term might be a little choppy might be a little down that pretty much is the <laughs> that's that's the the rhyme to all of the charts that we're going to look at short term maybe it's a little choppy but getting into september i think that everything starts ripping again and definitely fall winter i'm, I'm getting excited okay so it's like a quick look at ride i'll try to do these quick just for the uh the sake of yours uh your time and my time so Riot in the short term, I think we have, I mean, even regardless of how Bitcoin performs, I think riots and really Bitcoin miners overall have gotten pretty obnoxiously oversold um, over the past couple of weeks in, in the wake of all of this fear driven selling and just mania. Uh, I think that Riot has a pretty clear shot, at least up to this line of short term supports, uh, which would result in about in a 19, 20 percent climb back up to the 950, $10 region. Um, Riot has been in this trading range for a while. If Bitcoin does rally to, um, was it like $65,000, dollars $66, I wouldn't be surprised uh, to see Riot rally to at least the mid-range of, uh, uh, of this uh, sideways trading range, uh, which has, as you can see here, acted as a pretty significant ceiling uh, as far as uh, the past few months have been concerned. That would be around $11. So if Bitcoin rallies to 66 k I would be surprised at all to see Riot rally to you know $11-ish. If you have a large position, if you got in early, I would... I would Suggest considering taking profits there. Again, it's always your choice. But uh, as far as the longer term is concerned, uh, I do think that by you know by Christmas, by definitely the new year, right? Will I can I can pretty confidently say I want to say easily. I mean, I guess I can't confidently say that, but in my mind, it's incredibly incredibly likely that Riot rallies up to test this line of long-term resistance uh, by the holiday season. That would result in a fifteen plus dollar Riot platforms and. Um, yeah, I'm not worried. As always, you guys, money where my mouth is. And that 1220, that 1220 date could give you guys who understand options a little insight into how I'm trading right. Okay, so Mara, and then we'll move on to some of the other names uh, like Palantir and Veritone. Uh, you know, we'll kick it off with, no, we'll, we'll take a look at Palantir and Veritone after this. Frost 2000, Apple, close it out with NVIDIA. That's the rundown, okay? So as far as Mara is concerned, uh, Mara has perfectly on that little flash crash we got on Monday, uh, did perfectly test uh, the bottom line of support on this megaphone channel that I've had drawn for a very long time. If you guys have been watching, uh, you know, just the Bitcoin mining videos for the past couple of months, you would have known that this has always been a trend line that has been on the chart. And Mara perfectly tested it, perfectly bounced off of it. So again, if you don't believe in stick figure trend lines, you just haven't been trading for long enough. Okay, so um, again, as far as the short term is concerned, Mara does have, uh, you know, there is this very <laughs> this very sharp downtrend that mara is incredibly close uh, to already testing uh, which is why i'm also more excited about riot in the short term but ultimately in the long term if you're talking again about the holiday season going out to november december i think the mark can make its way back up to the line of resistance on this uh I, I would say that that would mean that riot would probably travel higher as well but mara um, I do think can travel back up to this line of resistance come the holiday season. That would result in a 37 to $38 marathon digital holdings group. Uh, 
I guess there's no group in there, but uh, that would result in a, you know, roughly $40 Mara. And uh, that's obviously over 2x from here. So that's Mara. I've never liked Mara the most. That's how I'm not going to go into in depth on why that is, but uh, Riot is always has always been my go-to and it's still my go-to. Maybe I'll pick up some Mara uh, just for those of you guys who I know like Mara. Where is, oh, Palantir and Veritone are up here. Okay, so Palantir and then we'll move on to Veritone. They just announced earnings. Um, reaction, immediate reaction bad. I want to talk about why it's actually not that bad though. Okay, so Palantir, one name. If you guys watch my recent video, this is a name that I was very bullish on this week and uh, it played out. It played out beautifully. Palantir crushed earnings by pretty much every metric. Uh, we called that, I believe, our call option position over Waves Capital. We have already taken some profits. We've taken about uh, 50, 50 to 60 percent of profits off of the table already. But our current position is up, I believe, 170 percent. So, Palantir position absolutely crushing it. You love to see that. Again, that's the beauty of call options and uh, why you should consider joining Waves Capital, join the winning team, because. Uh, been some pretty pretty exciting times definitely an exciting month so um palantir is has been going parabolic since their earnings report you can see that right here and uh, we have tested perfectly at that my conservative line of resistance on this long-term really beautiful really organic um almost textbook like if you if you typed in ascending channel in google this is kind of what would come up um the conservative line of resist resistance. And again, you guys, that's why it's important to draw conservative lines of resistance. Okay. Use multiple touch points. Don't just be the guy who does that. And that's your, that's your line of resistance. That's your, that's your channel. You got to use multiple touch points. Okay. If anything, it front runs. I'm not saying that we can't, that this doesn't come into play. Sometimes I see that a lot with Bitcoin, even like those can single candle wicks, um, actually proving is the line of resistance. But if you're trading, you always want to be one step ahead of your competition. And that's why it's important to make those conservative trend lines uh, just so you can trade upon those and, you know, not get greedy, lock in some of those profits before everyone starts selling and you miss the boat. Okay. So Palantir, again, I do think it's possible given the fact that as far as RSI is concerned, we're really not looking overbought just yet. We're actually nowhere near overbought levels just yet. And Palantir definitely in my eyes, looks like it has more room to run, but if Palantir does manage to climb another seven to eight percent in the week ahead, you know, climb to 32, 33 bucks, I would definitely look to take some profits. And uh, again, this one's really for you guys who are who are members of Waves Capital and uh, members of the portfolio group. And uh, that's just my thoughts on Palantir. I will sell the entirety of my position if we rally another seven to eight percent. Hey, maybe we break out. Maybe we rally back up to 40, 50 bucks, especially if the, the greater markets do rally as well. But uh, I'm not getting greedy. Again, we're already up well over 2x on the position. And uh, yeah, that, that capital can always go elsewhere, like kind of Veritone. So Veritone announced earnings, not great. Uh, I did listen to their earnings call with their CEO and founder, and I, I really liked what I was hearing. I'm really, really bullish. This is still one of the largest positions in my uh, in my portfolio uh, for full transparency because I see such asymmetric risk. Uh, I, I see such asymmetric upside uh, in the stock, I believe this has beautiful asymmetric risk profile, which means that the upside potential significantly outweighs the downside risk. And I do believe that uh, in the long term, we'll just go very long term here. I do believe that in the long term, Veritone can make it up to $6 plus. I do think that this happens in the fall, uh, fall to winter months. I think it's entirely possible. You can see here, uh, just for the example of this, if this sounds crazy, Veritone rallied 365% in less than a month, in 23 days. And that was this year, that was just back in March. So if you think it's crazy, just remember that it has happened before. A move much crazier than 160, 170% has happened in the past, and it can absolutely happen again. So I do think that's, I should say, <laughs> I'm not gonna say at the very least, we do need some good some good positive momentum behind small caps and just maybe even Veritone in general. But again, listening to that earnings call, I think that there is some, some promising stuff coming for the stock, this company on the horizon. And I do think that we can travel to six, seven dollars uh, over the next couple of months. And uh, at some point, you know, maybe it's 2025, maybe it's late 2024, time will tell. Maybe it's in the next couple of months. Um, I do think that ultimately this prior low will be retested as a new high, and that would lead us to a near $13 Veritone. So again, when that happens, I don't know, but I do think that it will happen at some point in the future, and I'm happy to continue playing Veritone until we get it. Veritone, again, a $90 million market cap. That is a drop in the bucket when you're talking about the public equity markets. 
Things can happen really fast, and once they do, you don't want to miss the boat. Okay, so that's Veritone. Let's take a look at IWM, Apple, and then close it out with NVIDIA. So, Russell 2000 had a great week. Again, a real buy the hype, sell the news events with the... Uh, with the recent uh, Fed meeting and Fed decision, sold off immediately after that. But um, as far as the short term is concerned, we are still holding, uh, I guess, more medium term. This is a pretty long. This is a pretty long term ascending channel. Actually, this has been in place since the beginning of this year. Uh, we have held above the level of support. Uh, this orange line right here on this longer term ascending channel. Uh, I do think that once again, the week ahead could be choppy. That's why I just. Full transparency, have a solid sum, solid chunk of Apple puts in my options portfolio right now. Uh, I use only Apple products. I pretty much, I'm recording this on an Apple Mac, uh, Apple desktop. So um, I do like Apple, but the reason I'm shorting Apple, I know I'm jumping the gun a bit here. We're talking about the IWM, but Apple, just the reason I'm shorting it is because it trades in contrast to the market. A lot of investors have been viewing it as a safe haven, as a uh, Again, a safe place in this volatile market to park your capital. But as far as historical PE ratios, as far as the technicals are concerned, which we'll see next, I think Apple is a great short in this current market environment. And again, maybe I'm wrong, but my money is my money is on on that. Okay, so as far as the IWM, the Russell 2K goes, uh, I do think that you know the market sees maybe another week, maybe two weeks of pain going into late August, early September, uh, go down a bit, travel sideways. I do think, however, the Russell does manage to stay above this. I still think small caps uh, have a much better macro chance, much better macro story, uh, much just, they're so much more appealing to actual investors in this market where, where mega caps are really still kind of uh, historically overvalued, small caps still undervalued. We're moving through a small cap earnings season right now, which just helps the case for these small cap stocks as well. Uh, again, maybe we travel sideways slightly lower in the week or two ahead, but ultimately I think that we rally up to my conservative line of resistance come uh, come early to mid-September. That would result in a $225 to $26 IWM. Uh, I'm sorry, this is come October. This would be uh, mid-October. This would be at least 10% up, reclaim those levels. Uh, but, you know, if we get that 50 basis point uh, cut in mid-September, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see that result in an immediate test of that. So, again, I do think that the Russell 2K can uh, climb back up to 225, uh, maybe to even 235, which was my initial target uh, prior to that little Black Monday crash. Uh, but ultimately, I do think that, uh, again, especially if we get that 50 basis point rate, uh, 50 beep 50 bip rate cut 50 bp rate cut uh you know i wouldn't be surprised to see the rust climb to 15 plus percent uh in the fall months october november maybe we see some new all-time highs as well previous all-time highs 245 250 260 and beyond i wouldn't be surprised to see that by 2025 for sure okay so very bullish on iwm uh in the medium to long term short term might be choppy apple uh for many reasons i do think is going to pull back further uh, I do think that Apple ultimately comes down to, you know, 194. The reason for that being, uh, I'm seeing a head and shoulders pattern play out here, okay? So, this is janky. Again, this Black Monday crash did um, kind of mess us up a little bit. Apple also under a significant line of resistance, really securing this downtrend right here. So, uh, Apple stair-stepping downwards. You can see uh, we did just perfectly retest this prior, uh, this prior floor as a new ceiling. I do think we reverse here. Uh, I think Apple starts pulling back and I think we ultimately play out this head and shoulders pattern. You can see the first shoulder here, the head, uh, that Black Monday sell-off created a kind of a stark sell-off, but next shoulder bouncing up. I think that we reverse here, ultimately come down to the base shoulder, not the very, very base, which would be around 191, 192. But uh, I think that at least personally, I'm going to take profits, take very significant profits, likely the far majority of my position around the 194 level. Maybe we fall even lower. Maybe Apple, again, if you zoom out here, you can see just how overbought Apple, I shouldn't say overbought, but like how Apple hasn't really corrected relative to the rest of the markets. Yeah, their earnings report was good. A lot of people are betting on a new iPhone cycle, uh, people buying their new iPhones because they have AI. I bought every iPhone for the past decade, and trust me, I don't care. <laughs> and I'm like kind of the AI stock guy. I'm not going to buy a new iPhone because it has AI capabilities, okay? Maybe other people will. I won't. And I'm just using anecdotal evidence in myself that there is probably not going to be a new iPhone cycle, especially because everyone's running out of freaking money. Credit card debt is at an all-time high. Insolvencies <laughs> are at an all-time high. No one has money. No one is like, it's very unlikely to me that the iPhone cycle upgrade. So again, that's just my quick spiel on Apple. I am bearish on Apple, although I use all their products. 
And uh, I do have put options on Apple. NVIDIA announces earnings on August 28th. That is a massive deal as well. That's why I think probably the markets do sell off. I mean, I'm pretty, I, I, I don't know. I'm not even gonna say anything. We'll see what happens. Uh, I do lean more bearish than as opposed to bullish in the week or two ahead leading into this earnings report. Because I do think that it's, uh, you know, it's very sketchy, especially due to Supermicro's recent report. Uh, the stock tanked upon their earnings. Supermicro and NVIDIA uh, kind of go hand in hand. Definitely similar sectors. NVIDIA, obviously more of a powerhouse, obviously more of a titan in the industry. But uh, yeah, so NVIDIA, we called for pretty much exactly what happened. Uh, it's good to see that. Uh, I will just say worst case scenario for NVIDIA would be a fall back to probably like this level, just a prior, like we spent a week here. We haven't yet retested uh, this, this prior ceiling, this prior macro ceiling that we saw in January of this year as a new floor. This is absolute worst case scenario. That would result in a NVIDIA price of 62, 63 bucks, further 30, uh, 39, 40% correction from here. But we have already fallen 35%. That's like very, very par for the course when you're talking about macro corrections and long-term bull markets for hype cycles. So 35%, we saw that. I would be surprised if NVIDIA did reverse here, if NVIDIA didn't fall lower than this again. But if their earnings report on October, uh, on August, I'm sorry, 28th does fall short, uh, I think that we could be falling to, you know, 50, 60, 70 bucks. Okay. So that's NVIDIA. Uh, I am no longer trading NVIDIA. I just wanted to follow up on this because we spent a lot of time over the past month talking about NVIDIA and called it really well. So congrats to you guys on that. We made a lot of money off those puts. And uh, yeah, I think we'll call the video there, you guys. I think this is pretty long. So uh, I'll wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments down below what you thought about any of these analyses. If you uh, if there are any names that you want me to cover in this next like big batch video because these are fun to make it's fun to rapid fire some of these and really talk too long about some of them like apple but i hope you guys enjoyed it let me know in the comments below what you thought about this what you think about the markets right now always look forward to talking to you guys down there and uh yeah join waves capital join the winning team first link in the description if you want to trade with us on a daily basis until next time you guys always remember take action make waves peace